G'day YouTubers and welcome to episode 10 in the East of Morton series. In this episode I'm going to try and cover the rest of the marks that I've missed in the last couple of episodes where they've been too short to get through all the marks I had up. I don't know if I'll do it because I'm still very pressed for time. I've spent a lot of time this week chasing around after the fuel leak in my tank trying to get that fixed. That's going to take a week or two still. People that weld those things up are busy. So that is what it is. However, it's still taken the time to sort it out. So again, I'm fairly time poor, but I will try to get through all of those marks in this video. Here we go. These are the marks that I've had up on the screen in the last couple of videos that we haven't covered yet. I'm not too sure about the southernmost two marks. I may have done them. Lost track a little bit, but I'll cover them. It'll only take a couple of seconds to add them in. Sorry if I'm doubling up. First off, I'll just draw your attention to the green zones here. There's only one mark that is extremely close to the green zone. So just be aware if you decide to fish that mark, the green zone's right next to it, and make sure you stay a little bit to the north of that green zone. I'll just lay some Navionics charts over these marks so you can get an idea of what the bottom bathymetry looks like. In the past, I've spoken about the different colour palettes you can apply to the bathymetry data and how changing the colour palette can make certain features stand out better. This area is a particular case in point. For my eyesight at least, I need to use both colour palettes in order to see the full bathymetry on both of the sets of marks. Looking at them as one set of marks grouped to the east and another set of marks grouped to the west, I find the blue colour bathymetry shows the bottom contours on the easternmost marks the best, whereas I get a better idea of exactly what the reef structure is doing on the left hands or westernmost marks by looking at the more turquoisey colour. I'll go into a little bit more detail on them as we zoom in on each area. I don't know that I've ever fished this easternmost group of marks. I've fished Deep Tempest, I've fished Shallow Tempest, but these marks that are in between them, I don't think I've ever stopped there and fished. I got these marks off the internet, and I think they're probably worth stopping and having a bit of a scan around if you're in the area. Certainly worth stopping and having a scan around if you're in the area. But as I said, I haven't fished these. I do want to get out there and have a look around them, see if they're anything worthwhile. It looks like there is some structure down there on the bottom but how good it is remains to be seen. The darker blue colour on the bathymetry is showing structure down there. I'm not seeing so much when I look at the turquoisey colour, but until you get it on your sounder, it's hard to tell for sure. There's certainly some structure down there. How good it is, you'll have to go out and see. But the marks are there, so it gives you a starting point to have a look around. Now I'll just leave these marks here. These are the marks in that easternmost group. I'll just leave these play through and then I'll come back and talk about the marks further to the west in shallow tempest area. I'll just butt in to say that this first mark is the wreck Melanie and there's another mark, the second mark is very very close to it so it's quite possible that that wreck is visible on your sonar and the second mark is for the wreck. I haven't been there so I don't know for sure, I will be checking it out when I get into the area with my new equipment but very possibly that is a findable wreck so have a look if you're in the area. Moving back to this group of marks over to the west, we'll zoom in on them and have a look at them. First of all, we'll zoom in on the bathymetry and have a look there. 
This is from the Navionics charts. And again, you can see there's a lot of structure down there. In this case, it stands out for me in the dark blue and the more turquoisey colour. The dark blue shows just how much structure is there. The turquoisey colour really highlights the line of reef, to me anyway, my eyesight. There's a lot of lines of reef out east of Morton, and they all run more or less north-south. They're patchy, but if you keep going far enough, you'll run into another patch once you find a line. That's my experience anyway, and when I say a line of reef, you might have to weave around a couple of kilometres east and west of the line to find it. And it's not due north-south. It's off a little bit, but once you get the idea, you'll come across more and more reef out there. However, you will burn a lot of petrol looking for it, which is why it's good to have starter marks where you can go to it and start looking around. The thing that I find really worth noting about this bathymetry is the amount of structure that the bathymetry shows down there that has no marks on it. And that just goes to show how much uncharted area or unmarked area of reef there is offshore. I keep saying this in the videos, the marks are starter points to look for. But don't be afraid to search out from the marks because... Not everyone shares their marks. In fact, I think the majority of people don't. Those of us that do share their marks are a little bit in the minority, or a big bit in the minority. But anyway, take the marks as starter points and have a look around the area. Always keep your eyes glued to your sounder screen while you're travelling, because you just never know when you're going to run over something that's worth circling back to have another look at. And this is one case particularly in point. Take note of all the structure that's down there, and I'll give you a couple of marks at the north and south end of it, but take note of all the structure that's down there that you could be scanning and looking for your own spots where the fish are hanging out. Again, I'll let the GPS coordinates of the marks play through by themselves. I'll just put on some background music while they go through. But stick around, because once this is done, we're going to have a look at some really good bathymetry of the area and talk a little bit about that. I showed these two marks earlier. I'll just explain what they are. These are the north and south marks of the line that I used to follow or zigzag along when I fished this area in Wave Dancer. I did have some other marks on the GPS I had in Wave Dancer, but they're gone. The GPS died and I didn't have the marks off it. But I do have these marks as being the north and south end of the line that we used to zigzag along. I had them jotted down on paper. Now these are some really good bathymetry maps of the area. I've got four different colour palettes here. I'm sure you'll find something in there that really makes things stand out for you. Again, I find it's a case that the light blue colour works really well for me. 
but the other colours do show some features that don't really stand out all that well for me with the blue. So I find again a combination of the colours, uh, looking at them all, helps me understand what's down there better. And there is an awful lot of structure down there. It's really obvious in these bathymetry maps just how much is down there and how much is not covered by the marks that I've given you. Just highlights the benefits of having a look around for yourselves in the general area. It's not like fishing, say, in a river where there's a log or a pile of rocks or something that you have to be fairly close to to be on the fishing ground. Out here I find that the fish spread themselves out a bit. They'll concentrate in little areas from time to time, but they're spread out anywhere along that reefy area. you just got to find where they are and then fish that area. And next time you go back out there, even if it's just a day after, they might have moved you know, a few hundred metres away to another area along that reef. It's hard to tell what motivates the fish to be in one area rather than another out there, or at least I find it is. In certain areas in the bay, you can say that the run of the tide is what brings the fish in there to feed because it concentrates the bait in an area. But out there... I don't know that it's the same, there's a lot more water there. Patches of reef are spread out over a huge area, so I'm not exactly sure why the bait conjugates in one area and not the other. But again, spend some time sounding around. It's out there, you will find it. you just got to put the effort in. And know where to start looking, that also helps. And finally, just to finish off the bathymetry of the area, I'll put this map up just in the one colour, and flash up some areas that I would find particularly interesting out there, and do want to get out there and scan around myself to see what I can see on my sonar. But that's not going to happen until I get my sonar, because I don't have any deep water sonar on the boat at the moment. I'm waiting for my new MFD, and no point in going offshore until I get that. Unfortunately, it was supposed to arrive in September, and now I'm told it could come any time up until Christmas, which is very, very, very disappointing. But it is what it is, and we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Well, that's it for this video. I thank you for taking the time to watch it, and I hope you got something out of it. I'm sure you will if you go out there and have a look around the areas that I've highlighted. There's plenty of stuff out there to be found. Unfortunately, I won't be joining you out there until I get my new MFD, but at least I hope to be back on the water in another week or two when I get my fuel tank repaired. I'll be out in the bay and doing a bit of work around there. Once I get my new MFD, I'll probably spend a few trips in the bay just getting used to it before I take it offshore. And I've got some big plans for videos once I do get that new MFD fitted. It lets me do quite a lot more than what I've had in the past. Anyway, that's all in the future. And until then, we'll carry on with the videos that I can do. And I hope you enjoy them. Next one, I hope, will be out on the water, but I sort of rather doubt it. I think I'll have to be doing something other than out on the water for the next couple of weeks. We'll see how it goes. But until then, good fishing.